You can hear a load of dogs over there, but that is not what we're here for. We're here for the cat, the Aura Funky Cat electric car from China. In this video, I'm going to dissect all of the things I like and I don't like about my last few thousand miles and three months of life with the Great Wall Motors Aura Funky Cat. There are things I can live with, there are things I really can't live with. I'm Johnny Smith, this is The Late Break Show, and this episode is proudly supported by blackcircles.com, Britain's largest online tyre retailer. If you haven't seen my original review of the Aura Funky Cat when it first came out, you're probably better off watching that first, and I will put a link to that above my head now. This is more of a video diary and a sum up of what it's been like to live with in the real world, because sometimes when you test a car, you only live with it for a day or even a week. A few months into a relationship, you start to see the things that maybe are a bit more annoying or a bit more impressive than you first thought they were. This is a 193 mile WLTP electric car. And I've been seeing, and obviously I've been driving it from February, March, uh, January, February, um, March, so cold months. I've been seeing 187 miles when I first charge it and press the on button. I've been getting in the real world about 170 miles. So pretty efficient, actually, all things considered. And it has been rather cold. The other thing to bear in mind of this car is people really look at it. Loads of people have taken a shining to its cartoony face. And I'm wearing my Porsche cap today, not because I own one, because I'm a loser, but because Porsche have definitely had, or the designer of Porsche, the ex-designer of Porsche has definitely had a hand in the way this thing looks. And I know I've said it before, but it has got a sort of bit of Porsche going on and a bit of Mini One and a bit of a number of other things going on as well. But it's fun. A lot of people resonate with that. And while I'm on the front end as well, I must point out the badge. I've lost count of the number of people who have asked me if I'm a member of the Incredibles. I'm not Mr. Incredible. I'm not Elastigirl either. And the other thing is visibility. The lights on this car, besides the fact they're a big part of the front end, the indicator is huge. It's the whole ring around there. So visibility for when you're parking and, and, and showing people where you're going. I know it's an obvious thing to say, but in a world where I've noticed lots of modern Land Rovers and Tesla Model 3s have got the tiniest of brake lights and turn signals, this car's got quite a lot of good light being emitted from it. But there is a problem with the lights at the back end. Let's go to the back. Now, the cat's back end is interesting. I like the light sequence when you lock and unlock it, but there is, for me anyway, two major problems with living with this car when it comes to the back end. Number one, a lack of rear wiper. Now that's not unique to the, the Aura Cat. There's a lot of not modern cars with no wiper, but because of the shape of this car, the sort of bulbous wrap around, I don't know what it is, the back window gets completely covered, or in winter at least, completely covered in road film and dirt straight away. That means you can't see out of it, but also it means I worry about the visibility of these lights because they're in the back window. So I think it's a bit of a false economy and it must be because of the shape and the aero of this thing. Secondly, can you see that? That's a dent. I did that with my own hand closing the boot of my own car. I wasn't being aggressive either. I just went like that and it's just dented it. It's a dull dent, it will come out, fear not. But that concerned me. Thirdly, I'll put, I've got some of my bit, bits in the car. Now that 228 litre boot, I knew when we reviewed the car, it was certainly not class leading, far from it, but it wasn't the worst. The biggest problem I have is, is the way in which this here, this, this plastic cladding is so thick and bulky, and this angle is so sharp, and of course the passer shelf is in the way, you constantly can't shut the boot on your stuff because you have to rearrange it. And I've spent months now trying to get my head around what fits and what doesn't fit and in what orientation, to the point that it does get very, very annoying. It's not a patch 
on my Renault Zoe uh, long-term test EV. If you want to look at my life with the Renault Zoe last year, I'll put a link above my head for that. So that is a problem. Seats down is really good though. What I'm trying to say is, I don't have a problem so much with this tapering in, this bulbous bit here, that's not a problem. The problem is this angle here. This cuts off when the parcel shelf's on such a huge amount. And when you're trying to, trying to put boxy things in or hard things in, you just can't, you just can't work out what's gonna fit and the boot's gonna shut on it. It's really annoying. Now, the cockpit of the Rita or the Doja, depending on what your favorite cat is, is what I would say is, it still feels really good. Every time you get in it, I'm impressed with the layout of it, and I love the kind of subtlety of this screen, but there is a drawback to the position of this screen. And that is, when I'm driving it, this is my driving position, right? Okay, get my wrist on the top of the steering wheel, usual stuff. I can't reach the touchscreen without leaning forward. And so that unsettles me a bit, but also the fact that like all touch screens, they're not ideal when you're driving along back roads. So you have to kind of rest your hand on the top and use your thumb. Well, that's what I, that's what I do anyway. So that's a bit irritating. The wireless charger is really good. It works every time. It's excellent. I like that a lot. The Bluetooth hands-free um, is a bit odd. If you have Bluetooth on on your phone, and you try to find it on the, on the screen, on the infotainment, it, it rarely finds it. If you go into your phone with Bluetooth on and you see the Aura Cat and you press it, it connects instantly. So you have to go via your phone, not the car. And that's just the way I've experienced it anyway. The, info, the way the infotainment is kind of uh, presented to you, is that I think it's, it's not massively intuitive. So on the home screen, on the home screen here, this is the way it starts when the car starts up. It always pauses the radio. Again, I don't know if it's a glitch with this, like a new freshly launched model. It always pauses the radio. You have to get in the car. You'll see there's a radio station, the last one you were listening to, but you always have to press it. You can't just listen to the radio. It just won't let you. I don't know whether it's one of these weird safety features. The other thing is, is and I totally forgot this, I couldn't work out where the nav button is because there is no nav button. What you have to do is press the home button twice and then the nav appears here. Again, it's just a bit of an odd quirk. It's almost like they haven't quite, they haven't quite ironed out the software or the, the navigation experience yet. And down here, you've got system settings and you've got vehicle settings. And there is a difference, but it's not clear or it isn't for thickos like me who've been living with it for three months. You go into system settings, that's your Bluetooth visibility for the phone. There you go, it's connected to Johnny Smith's telephone device. That's me. Um, and then down there, you can adjust the sound quality and the display. But then you go to vehicle settings. And this is a really crucial, not that one. Again, so, frequently used let's go to frequently used so it says frequently used i've got the power steering set on sport this has very very light steering so even in sport mode i still think it's light so i leave it in sport the whole time but this is really crucial for what irritates me and is almost a deal breaker on the aura cat at this moment you get it in car and it says in cabin monitoring right driver monitoring systems is a nightmare. That's lane keep assist, fatigue monitoring, dangerous behavior monitoring. You can switch that off, but when you press it, it gives you three seconds to decide whether you definitely want to before you confirm it. That resets every time you set the car, you switch the car off, which is infuriating because this little monitor here is constantly checking whether you're awake, asleep. It tells me, it actually says, keep your eyes on the road and pay attention when all I'm doing is looking at this to change my radio station. So it, it's the creator of its own distraction. But worse still, and I'll do it when I'm out on the road, is the driver monitoring system and the, um, the lane keep assist. It, 
it does not like back roads. It does not understand B roads. Regularly it's tried to steer me into traffic rather than away from traffic. It doesn't understand where the verges are. And it will sometimes um, take control even when you've turned it off. Is it thinks it has to because it thinks you can't drive. And I find that a no-no. That needs rethinking. R rethinking big time. Go into the energy recuperation level. I have it on strong all the time because it doesn't feel that strong compared to other cars I've tested. Uh, even on single pedal mode, so you know hard regen, it's not that hard, so you can easily drive it in the regen. And it'll do up to 50 kilowatts, I've found, of regen uh, charge here. One other thing I must point out on this infotainment screen is the, um, the buttons, the tiles uh, options on the right-hand side here. The, the icons are really small. And they're very small when your hands are a long way away from the screen. Um, and I don't think you can make them bigger. So going from the home screen to all the other tiles like this, it does actually, it's, it's quite tricky. I could do with them being a bit bigger. When you go into things like heating, for example, and heating, because I've driven this car from January to the end of March, those three months, it's been cold. You've used the heating a lot. It's, it's thankful that these lovely chrome toggles, you've got a rear window de demist, uh, which doesn't work. It does work well, but obviously the back window is covered in mud most of the time and it doesn't have a wiper, so. But the demist is, is very effective. The heating's pretty good. What I don't, still don't entirely know with the heating, and that's how you turn it on with a physical button, is that um, it doesn't seem to make any impact on the mileage of the car, the range of the car. When I turn the heating on, unless you've got it on like 25 full fan, it doesn't seem to knock off any miles. So I don't entirely trust that. And the one thing I would say, or oh, the 360 camera is fantastic, but I'll demonstrate that when I'm maneuvering and driving, because that is really detailed and really good. And, and the, number, the amount of adjustability, look, you can decide whether it switches it off at nine miles an hour or 19 miles an hour. There's so much configurability here. Um, but heating. This first edition, which I would suggest you don't buy, because I think it's too much money for not enough extra. You can't buy it with heated cookers, bum cookers. And I find that so irritating, because I want to heat the seats. Electric cars need heated seats in, in this kind of country in winter. And I've craved a heated seat for so long. I really miss my heated seat. I'm sorry, Aura, but you need a heated seat in this. And I think you can order it but not a first edition. So don't buy a first edition. Also remember this car was gonna be 25 grand starting price and it's now 32. And that difference, that seven grand difference is huge in this sector when you've got cars like the MG4. If you haven't seen my MG4 review, I'll put it above my head now. That car embarrasses this in, in dynamically, but perhaps not visually in here. Now, the Funky Cat does have a sort of automatic fly-away handbrake thing, but it doesn't always work. And regularly on my drive, I'm fighting it like this, and it's annoying because you don't know when it is or isn't going to work, so it's a bit indecisive. It just looks like a sort of dog with worms. It's dragging its bum. Head to the Black Circle's website, enter your vehicle registration number and your postcode, and then you'll find the most suitable tyres for your car and your budget. There are thousands of reviews of different tyres from real customers to help you choose the best tyres for your car. And with the Black Circle's click and fit service, with over 2,000 tyre fitting partners, there will be a garage or a mobile tyre fitter conveniently located near you. Now, one thing that definitely annoys me about the Funky Cat is the indicator stalk. It's really vague and it doesn't always cancel and then, and then you don't know how to cancel it. And it will indicate the other way. And then you find yourself driving down the street indicating left and right or on a motorway, looking like basically a drunk driver. Right. And the other thing, like I said to you before, is this thing, driver monitoring system, which uses all the uh, monitors for lane keep assist. But on roads like this, regularly, can you hear it doing that meatloaf in, intro to Batter to Hell? It, it doesn't know where the road is and it will often try and steer me the wrong way. And even when you turn it off, it still intervenes because it doesn't trust you. It still doesn't trust me. And I think that this stuff hasn't been calibrated quite right 
and my personal view is that it's too it's too nannying it's too overly attentive and it actually has a detrimental effect on what it's trying to do it's trying to be more it's trying to be safer trying to be helpful and it actually i think makes the driving experience more dangerous and irritating and uh yeah but i'm an adult and i'm you should trust me to drive this machine and if i need help i should call on you hey aura Turn off lane keep assist. Okay, cancel. Oh, that's pretty good. It's the first time I've done that. Typically, now that we've got the cameras rolling, it's not doing, it's not doing the lane keep thing that it, that it keeps wanting to do. So irritating. It's not doing it. See, look at this. Look, I'm just reversing around this corner. The 360 camera in, in this car, so you've got camera under either side mirrors and the, the mirrors are big they actually create a lot of wind noise i think um but the, the camera layout look at that it's so comprehensive and really good um clarity i found that to be useful so you've got distraction monitoring fatigue monitoring dangerous behavior monitoring biometric identification vmdr so one of these system there's the sort of like magic eye the big brother and and i do feel like it is a bit of a big brother some people have said that they wouldn't buy this car because they feel like this chinese car will be i don't know regaling all this information and data and ai to the chinese government i've got no idea but if the chinese government want to find out more about me they can fill their boots because I don't really care. So now that we've got the cameras on, it's not bloody doing it, even though it does it every minute of every day, ordinarily. Like I said before, this display here, although it's beautiful and stuff, all the icons and the pictures and the, you know, the range gauge, and even the speedo, it's all very small. There's lots of excess space. They could have shrunk this down, really. Now, in the power assist, button here again so it gives you your instant uh, range and your instant usage consumption of power and your regen here but one thing it doesn't do like the Kias and Hyundai's of the world it doesn't keep a really good database um, of all the journeys you've done previous to this and how much power they've used and what your average miles per kilowatt hour are but can you hear it's constantly emergency steering me that way so into, into oncoming traffic, because it just doesn't understand back roads. I find it very annoying. Now, although I haven't spent much of my time in the back seat of the Funky Cat, my kids and a lot of other passengers have, I have been in it a bit. Everybody comments on the, the ride and the comfort of the Funky Cat, which I'll talk more about a bit further down the line. But everybody also, loves the feeling of the soft furnishings. They like the, the sumptuousness of the seats. My kids don't feel travel sick in it. If you're tall, there's still a ton of headroom at the back here. And those are things which all bode very well for the Funky Cat. In fact, this is the part of the car they've really homed in on and they've got it spot on. It does feel special. It does feel premium in here. The other thing I'd say about this, this fabric is that it's really easy to keep clean. I thought it was going to be a nightmare, but it's very resilient. You're probably looking at my legs off the seat going, yeah, they don't look very comfortable. Well, that's a typical EV thing because the battery lives in the floor. But for most journeys, it's not as bad as people think, actually. It's not as uncomfortable as people think. And this has a nearly flat floor. So when we've had three in the, across the back, they seem happy, although they do fight over the single USB. There's no USB-Cs, which I don't care about, but just for your reference, there's only one and it is a USB. I've had no problem rapid charging this car with the CCS uh, various public charging points. I've used the three pin, but twice this has happened where the plug has stayed in the car and it doesn't matter how much I lock and unlock the car, it wouldn't let me take the plug out. What I realized is when I pop the bonnet, I can just manually override it by tugging this yellow loop here and that releases it. And I didn't even look in the manual. I just popped the bonnet and had a quick look. So thankfully, I got out of that. I don't know why it did that. Don't even think it was that cold a weather. But anyway, it solved the problem. Now, roads like this, which are actually quite, you know, rough, 
undulating, patched up. The comfort level on, on the Funky Cat is really good. It rides in quite a mature way. It's only when you get into the real kind of twisty stuff that I think legacy manufacturers possibly show their experience a bit more. So yeah, I'd say the damping is sort of on the softer side and it's very comfortable, but it does get upset when the roads get quite complicated. It does start to kind of stutter and skitter a little bit. Now it's front wheel drive, front motored this thing, 169 brake horsepower. Um, so it's not really quick, 8.3 to 62, 99 mile an hour top speed. But, so it's kind of, it's more Renault Zoe in terms of performance than you know, Kia Soul or MG4. And really the latter, well, all of them, the MG4, the Kia e-Nero, Soul, Zoe, there's so many cars in this sector, this really competitive sector. And my worry with the Aura Cat, as although it's interesting and people are intrigued by it and it does catch eyes, is for a brand which nobody in this country knows, Great Wall Motors, they sold a bad pickup truck years ago, that's kind of it. You need the price to be irresistible. 32 grand is not irresistible. More people would buy an electric Fiat 500 than this. And you can only buy this at present with a small battery, the 45 kilowatt hour usable battery pack, which does just under 200 miles. So I'd like the bigger battery, please. Just like Fiat selling the 500E with a city battery and then a longer range battery. That first edition badge and stitched mat, it's, it is tacky. But that's the only tacky part of the interior. So for me, the, the kind of helping hands parts of this car are a deal breaker. I find them so distracting. And even when you've turned them off, they haven't quite turned off. And the adaptive cruise doesn't quite know what it's doing. And the steering is constantly trying to do something. And it's making that noise, which was funny at first. It's not funny or charming now anymore. In fact, it's just plain irritating. And I've done, I think I've done two and a half thousand miles on this. Yeah, I've done two and a half thousand miles since, since borrowing this car. So two and a half thousand over three months. And obviously it's all been winter driving really. A little bit of spring lately, like today. Um, and I have been regularly seeing 170 miles uh, range. What I would also say is, is I was worried at first about public rapid charging, whether it would know the car, whether it have any communication issues, and I have not found that to be a problem at all. Which a lot of more established car manufacturers have had. So, or a funky cat. Well, since living with it for three months, my relationship's definitely soured from when I first reviewed it. And it's mostly for two reasons. One is the price. When this car was first revealed to us, we thought it was gonna be about 25 grand, and it's now over 32 and a half. That's a big jump. The problem with that is it puts it squarely in a place with more established electric cars that are of similar kind of specs, but with a badge that you recognize, in this country at least, and probably with a better dealer network. That said, it does have a very premium interior, or at least a, a perceived premium interior. I have no idea on the longevity of these cars. And the range of this car has been pretty good. It's been pretty solid to what was given to us, you know, 193 mile WLTP, but I wish it was available, A, as a bigger battery car at the same time, like the Fiat 500e, and two, get rid of all those little interfering safety nannies and, and electronic aids. They need to be recalibrated or got rid of because they're actually doing worse for you. They're actually being more distracting than helpful, which goes against their entire point. And they are a deal breaker for me. I'd love to know your comments though. Would you consider buying an Aura Funky Cat? Or at least 
if you're thinking of buying one right now, before you buy one, always test the rivals first. I say this about all kinds of cars, electric or not, because what I think about this is what I think, not necessarily what you think. One thing I do know is it's got a very characterful face and people are intrigued by it. It's not massively characterful to drive, but there's something about it. And that cabin is certainly the thing that it's hanging its sort of premium price on. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Late Break Show. Um, if Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. We do have a merch shop. It's really good, even though I say it myself. I'll put a link for that in the description. Or I might even put it on screen if I've worked out how to do that. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.